A long, soft breath out, as if exhaling away my African soul. I see smoke. Pleased to meet you, England. Today, on these new shores, I breathe away all of which is already written, and breathe in a new chapter. Dreams and hopes from a faraway place, only days ago, seemingly gone but for the moment. Cold, stinging on the skin, emotionally sore. The fibre is begging your weary mind for help. All I have left to give is heart. The mist just sits there, watching. Foggy walls blanket all nature's distractions. My only focus now is the game. The game of a new language, a new system, new rules. I'm anxious, anxious because I haven't yet the voice to reason nor the savvy to challenge the rules. I guess I'll just have to take the hits. I invoke the spirits of the ages, the many voices who have gone before me. In exchange for my time, they have left me parables. Words woven so deep within that they would only loosen when I needed them most. Yet still from those darkened corners, even as I plead, silence. I begin to hear the sounds of Africa, low rumblings on the earth, like a stampede. Through the damp haze, boots, at least ten pairs, run at me. Tackle him! Oi, Bamin, get him! I stand still and wait for the perfect time to steal the ball. Alone and head to head. Crack! I receive my blessing. Yeah, well done, Bamin. Great effort. The team pulled me up from the earth and back into reality. The pain in my face and the ache in my shoulders seem irrelevant as my hair is tussled by many hands. A mighty pat on the back, though still sore, seems to make it all right. I conclude that tackling means taking a hit. More like that, mate. Not sure if the compliment was for me or the wildebeest. Either way, everyone was smiling. Unwinding. The line is cast out into the unknown. The shell that has been my cocoon for 11 years starts to crack. When rock fishing, shells are broken with stones to release the bait for the hook. The leftover fragments, mere fodder, are tossed near the cast line. The innards from a creature once so innocent send signals to the prey. The baited hook becomes a beacon to entice the catch. It is at this very point the test of a fisherman can truly begin. My carapace cracks. Fear and fragments are released, bait for the test. As I unwind into the unknown, the foray into self-belief can begin. Practice, practice, practice to survive. Tears of fear and sweat run over the contours of my chapped lips. Droplets of diluted blood mark the field. The English earth and I become one, elected as the keeper of my secrets, my hopes, my dreams. Mine! I said mine! The dreams of one are the nightmares of another. They say that some friendships meet your needs, and some friendships do not come about by words. You can't pass it forward, Bamin. Just stay behind me and I'll show you, okay? All expectations, hopes and fears are thrown and tossed about on the pitch. They float around, bob up and down, until they draw interest. <clears throat> you there! Yes, you! All okay! Here a moment. Mr. Agar. I have heard stories from the other boys that he is a legend, a wicked bowler, whatever a wicked bowler is. Is this your first game of rugby, lad? Be sure to show up at practice on Saturday. Yes, sir. We leave the forest and head back towards the grey changing rooms. Natural light streams through the large single paned windows as we charge inside seeking heat. The only warmth, it seems, emanates from the ochre in the wooden benches. Studs smash against the cold concrete floor while the aluminium lockers are dented further. Voices of a hooded what all blend into soporific notes. I sit and watch, only to discover that stamping the floor can loosen the mud while the locker space staves confusion over the kit mix-ups. Taking my time, most had already showered and dressed, I peel away the remaining soil from my new boots, lost in wonderment. Voices slowly disperse down the hall, and beyond changing room doors. You need to get a move on if you're gonna make it to French. The clothes go on quickly over my shorts. I wipe down my face and limbs with the only dry thing to hand, my school jumper. Nobody will know anyway, as the dirt seems to blend in nicely. During supper, conversations still abound about who played the best and future team selections. Meanwhile, I'm lost in my plate of something I don't quite recognize. Shower before lights out, comes the call. We gather our wash bags and with the odd bit of earth on my skin, now hardened and flaky, 
My stiff crinkly knees attempt to keep up with the other few stragglers. One lad is from Singapore, second year, but speaks English as good as any local. He knows everything and seems to understand the system very well. As we rush through the doors of the gym changing rooms, the taller boys leap up to touch some pipe work. This must be an English tradition. The showers come on at the push of a button. There's limited time before it's put back out again, turning the water off. Initially, it seems quite good fun, but soon I realise it is not. Through the moans, I understand what the pipe work grabbing was for. No hot water. As the remaining bits of soil are washed away in stops and starts, the pristine white floor tiles turn muddy. I stare at my brown feet and watch in wonder. Not too long ago, that was sand underfoot. I have a go at scrubbing my knees, but it's tricky. They're sore and the water's not inviting. Late to the shower rooms, I learn, means missing out on a blast of heat. Next time I'll get there earlier. Nonetheless, we laugh, we talk through the echoes, and soap, I discover, is not as cool as shower gel, or whatever that is. Hey Lee, what's a tosser?